So, um, Julie, please. I know we are also live uh, feed in the pavilion, in the dome. So this message is for you who are not in the room. Um, I really encourage you to join us here in the plenary hall because in total humility, I think this topic is probably the most important, not only for me, but for all of us. Because we are talking about the priorities of the citizen, which is our priorities. And frankly speaking, I think this is the most important to know where the world is going, to understand the priority of the citizen of the world. And this is a program that we are hosting at the uh, FI Institute, which means a lot. And um, you will see also how people are totally disconnected from the leaders. And sometimes even just the corporate leaders and the world leaders. So as you saw on this short video, uh, this year, uh, we conducted this report, which is becoming more than a report. It's more than an index. It is a tool which is helping now more and more world leaders to understand their citizen, to understand why they demonstrate in the street. And what this video was not saying is that we ask a question, thanks to our friends and partners from Accenture worldwide, which is, what do you think is the most important threat? And guess what the people said? Threat number one, social revolution. So it's not uh, a joke what we're talking about. It's extremely serious. And um, uh, as you can see, number one is income and quality of life. So people don't compromise anymore on this important topic, cost of living and quality of life. People want to have a very decent life, not to be rich, but one data was extremely shocking for me. 36% of people in South Africa cannot buy food every day. So we're extremely privileged here in this room. But this is why I think this conversation is extremely important. The second priority is social inclusion. People feel totally excluded. They feel excluded. And, um, and even extremely challenging. We talk about technology nonstop, technology. We all have phones. We all have computers. But many people, and when I mean pe many, I'm talking about billions of people, feel totally excluded from technology. And because they don't even have access to internet. So they have access to nothing, no education online, no knowledge, nothing. And this is what we'll be talking about with Julie, who is leading a, a huge group of 800,000 people Accenture. Julie, first of all, thank you for the partnership. We're extremely happy and proud to be together. And this is just the beginning of a long journey because unfortunately, I don't think we'll solve all these issues in one year. So are you surprised by this result as a global uh, CEO of a great global organization? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for allowing us to be your partner. This work is really important. You know, as CEOs, we often talk about needing to be on the ground and really hear what our people say. This study is about being on the ground and hearing what our global citizens say. And that is, provides a very different level of insight. I will tell you that uh, the thing that perhaps maybe surprises me, or I think will be a surprise to most, is that the concerns of the global north and the global south are the same. There is very little difference on the first four, besides technology, the fifth, between. And I would say that many people would have thought, oh, you know, cost of living, quality of life, that would not have been a top concern in the global north. And it's very important to have this insight because the challenges we have are truly common across the globe, and it gives us an opportunity to think about them differently. The second thing that I think is very important is the insight on technology that you mentioned because it is a priority across the globe and in many countries, the digital divide, the absolute lack of access to technology is very stark. And while it's critical now, if you fast forward five years, given the pace of technology change, the pace of adoption, right, unless we deal with the basics of infrastructure, that is going to be a gap that widens significantly, and it's already wide. So lots of insights uh, for both 
governments and companies in this report. And, and this is a message for our members. You know, uh, if you allow me, Julie, I would like to precise something very important. At the FI Institute, we started this membership program this year, which is not a ticket to attend a conference. We want people to commit because what we are trying to do at the FI Institute is precisely to help, not solving, but at least uh, contribute to reduce these uh, huge challenges that we are facing. So one of the programs that we launch is to give access to, of course, clean water. It is improving quality of life. We started many initiatives in Africa and in Asia. And also to give access just to the basic computers, just to have less of technology inclusion. So I really encourage you, our friends, to download. Uh, you have a QR code in the priority gallery, this report, which was an extremely well done. Congratulations to your team, really. They did an amazing job, not only on collecting the data, but also the way they are presenting the data, which really will help you as leaders, trust me, to understand your staff, to understand your partners, to understand your citizen, and to understand what are their expectations. Extremely interesting. So precisely, as a CEO of a 800,000 plus people global company, uh, what are your answers to that? Well, let me put it into two buckets. First, the definition of leadership at Accenture. At Accenture. So we have two leadership essentials which are very important right now. One is to lead with excellence, confidence, and humility. Humility is absolutely critical because that is how you build great teams, you challenge yourself, you're able to embrace newness, and you learn from others. And in this world right now, humility is a differentiator in terms of who will succeed. You know, sorry to interrupt you, Julie, I'm very moved by what you say. My late father left me one thing as a legacy, the rule of three H, always. Humanism, always, he was telling me, Whatever you will do in your life, be a humanist, never lose your sense of humor and humility. Ah, I so love that. Thank you for that. reminding me of that. Thank you. That is, I love that. The companion leadership essential, which I think is so important and relates to the topic today, is having the courage to change and the ability to bring people along the journey. As a corporate CEO, I believe that is our responsibility to ensure that the change in technology, the opportunities that we bring our people and that we move from commitment to action. And so back in 2013, we were the first company to say every business would be a digital business. We were 250,000 people, less than 20% of our people had those skills. So we became what I call now a learning machine. We invest a billion dollars a year, actually over a billion, on training and development. Talent. Talent. It is all about talent because that's how you bring people along the journey. That's how you're able to make sure that the communities we live in are vibrant. Not only do we spend a billion dollars, but we have 733,000 people today. We have a database with all of their skills so that when we need new opportunities, we can run an algorithm and we can see who can be upskilled. These are things that are available to every company. We say to succeed in talent, you have to do three things. You have to be able to access it, so you need diverse talent, you need good partners, you need to have um, a good ability to access markets, and second, you need to be a talent creator. So as companies, we have to take responsibility, either alone or in partnership, to upskill and invest in the skilling of our own people. And then finally, the ability to unlock that talent. And that's our commitment that people at Accenture need to be net better off for working here. And when you put that in the context of the report and the concerns people have about cost of living, about social inclusion, for companies, it must start in our own companies first. Um, I would. I would love to have more time to talk about this amazing matrix that you are building of matching skills with needs. But unfortunately, our time is quite limited. But before we end this conversation, I have another important question to ask you. As you know, this edition, you probably notice of the FII is under one of the umbrella of AI. AI is everywhere. Everyone is talking about AI. So how can we be proactive on AI to find a balance between risks 
uh, it carries and the need of, I would say, uh, of the society to progress. You know, everyone is saying that now AI is mandatory. There is no way we can live without AI. So how do you manage this uh, combination? Right. Look, in 2021, we said the companies that will succeed are those who will reinvent using tech, data, and AI. And we absolutely believe that. Every part of every government and enterprise. The only thing that will stop us from making progress in the way we should is if we don't do it responsibly. And responsibility is about certainly bringing our people along the journey from talent, but it's about reliability. It's about avoiding bias, security, and data privacy. I ask CEOs one simple thing, because again, it must begin within the private sector in addition to the government. I simply say, is there a person you can call in your organization who knows where is AI being used, what are the risks, how are you mitigating them, and how are you monitoring? This sounds suspiciously like a basic compliance program. At Accenture, our board of directors oversees our responsible AI compliance program. It is just like anti-corruption or data privacy or export controls. When we serve our clients, someone is required to answer the question, is AI involved? If it is, it automatically gets routed, so we assess the risks, we know what mitigation we need to do so that we know that when we deliver for our clients, we are delivering it responsibly. We're leading in Gen AI right now. We have something called responsible AI in a box because most of our clients cannot answer that first question. And so we're making sure that as they move quickly, they're not making the problem worse by embedding it in the worst in the cases. And so again, we have responsibility to partner with the private sector, the public sector, the not-for-profit sector, but we also always must begin with what we are doing in our own companies, and that is our responsibility. Julie, I think you should to come back early next year in the Kingdom, because in this place, the Kingdom will host an amazing AI summit, and I think we, we need to hear and to learn from you. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Richard. you very much.